Hi, my name is Mike. Thanks for joining me today on my channel, Technically Church, where I share over 20 years of experience in audio, video, lighting, and multimedia. You can always find out more on my website at technicallychurch.com. Let's jump in. So how many inputs and channels can you actually use on a Behringer wing? I had the same question when I was researching mine to purchase, so I thought I would try to explain this in a clear manner for you guys. All right, so the Behringer wing uh, does have 48 channels. So these are 48 stereo channels. You have access to channels one through uh, 40 here on the first four layers, and then you have eight aux ins. So on the Behringer wing, you can use the aux ins however you would like. You can patch them in just like a normal channel. So you do have access to 48 actual physical channels on the wing. Now, these are 48 stereo channels. So on some older mixers, to get a stereo channel in, it would take two faders. On this mixer, the Behringer wing, you actually have stereo faders on every single channel. So you have true access to 48 inputs, whether they're mono or stereo, at any given time. So you can use 48 channels that may take more than 48 inputs. So that's where the confusion comes in. The board does support many more than 48 inputs. So you have access to 48 stereo channels. You do have access to 96 inputs over AES 50 ports A, B, and C. So if you were to buy three Behringer S32 snakes, I have two of them here. Uh, you have 32 inputs on each of those snakes. If you run an individual ethernet line to each one, you can actually access all 32 of those channels. So if you were to use every single one of your uh, inputs was stereo, some crazy scenario, you had, uh, you know, 48 electric guitar players that were all stereo, you would actually need 96 inputs to use those 48 stereo channels. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So you have access to the 32 channels on each stage box, which you can plug three of those in on ports A, B, and C. And then you have uh, 64 inputs uh, via Dante. So if you put a Dante card in, here's the wing Dante card. This is an add-on for the uh, wing. So on the back of the board, you do have one card slot. You can take out the built-in uh, SD card slot that comes with it. You can put in the Dante card, which will give it Dante capabilities, and then you have 64 channels over Dante, so you have access to those. And then you have an additional uh, 48 USB inputs that you could hook a uh, computer up to to get some additional sources there. Now the wing does have eight inputs and eight outputs on the back of the board itself. So you have access to all of these inputs and outputs through all these different methods, the stage snakes, the local inputs and outputs, uh, Dante if you choose to add it in USB and you can route all that to 48 stereo channels at once. Now one of the benefits here uh, if you want to do some advanced routing is because you have so many different choices you could have additional microphones, additional instruments uh, plugged into the board all at once more than those 48. You just can't use them at the same time. So if you set up multiple scenes, let's say you're doing a uh, uh, theater drama play um, and you have more microphones you know than the board can support but you do have the inputs if you don't need them all at the same time let's say in scene one you need these 48 mics and you have 50 plugged in but in scene two you don't need two of the mics from scene one but you need two additional mics so you can do that through um, on this board it's called snaps so it's similar to a scene but it's called snaps so just a real quick if you go to uh, library, you have uh, several options here. You have shows, snaps, and snips. So a show is just a collection of snaps. A snap is essentially a scene. You can save the entire board into a snap, including routing, so you could change that um, over the snaps. So just a real quick overview of what you can get in and out of this board, how many channels you truly can use, and how many inputs, and how you would make that work. Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Mike. You can always find out more on my website, technicallychurch.com, or on my YouTube channel, Technically Church. Look forward to seeing you soon.